talk when jazz will crank up, but they don't do that for five and ten or Comcast when they come out or whoever, all right? Uh, did I tell you to move? I hope we got this, because y'all know jazz will be, hey, mama, get behind that camera. Uh, I want Y'all have got to find, I wanted y'all to meet this young lady now. Uh, we had interviewed her, but she's going to tell you, tell them your name. Lady Ebony. Where are you going? What you going to be on tomorrow? The Bobby Jones Gospel Show. All right. She's going to Bobby Jones Gospel Show, and we're here to uh, see Lady, Lady Ebony out. Bring me those things, baby. We've got a little something for her. Ebony, I'm going to want you to tell them a little something. Uh-uh, those, those bracelets. I want you to tell them a little something about yourself. Um, okay. Um... I'm a, well, yes, I'll be singing um, tomorrow as well. I do. I've been singing for a very long time. I've been singing since I was about five years old, and I got back into it about 23. So I'm 25 now. So about 23, I got back into it. So it's just a blessing. I can't say any enough about it because it's more than a blessing. God has been so good for the things, the blessings that He's been giving me so far, and I I don't deserve them. I don't feel I deserve them, but Hey, I can't I can't complain with God. So with that being said, I'm just very thankful and I'm thankful for everyone else as well that is supporting me because we have we've had a lot of a lot of support for Lady Ebony lately. And I'm very happy about that. And I want to thank everybody for that. This lady been on the road. She been everywhere. She's been performing, and every time I look around, she's doing something. And I told her, I said, Evan, you going on Bobby Joan. Uh, this is her mom. How are you proud of her mom? I am. I am so, so very proud. You know, we've been working toward this day for a very, very long time. And it's only because of the grace of God that this opportunity even came up to her. And uh, we want to thank Jazzy Red, first of all, because she opened the door and she made the way. And we just want to, you know congratulate you and say thank you for you know for just caring yes, enough to even submit her name and um and it came to fruition so you had faith in her and this is an opportunity that just shows that how other people's faith can come to fruition in the name of god so and we just yes. want to say thank you for that. well thank you very much but i bought y'all a little something for you this is uh for you and a little bling bling keychain, a little bling bling. You always give them something when they're going on a trip. Um, I'm going to want you all to uh, hold on because I want to. I want to show the award. Hey, she was in. You had her in 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 church early. Tell. Me. Oh yes, ma'am. Um, um, I Ebony um, has been in church all of her life, and I just want to. Um, you know, just I tell people all the time that I did not send my girls to church. I took them to. For a very, very long time while they were growing up, my life ended um, so that they would have the life that God would have them to live. And um, so this, again, is uh, it's just God's uh, grace coming to fruition just through the opportunities that has been afforded her and where she's about to go. Because who knows what a God has for you, it is for you. So, um, you know, that that's just where we are right now. And uh, they finna bless me because you're gonna hold that, and uh, mom is gonna read it. This is for uh, Mr. Bobby Jones. I wasn't able to get it to him in 2014. Uh, I know his had his sister had passed, but uh, his mom is gonna read it. I'm gonna zoom into it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Can you read it? In appreciation, Humanitarian of the Year Award 2014, presented to Dr. Bobby Jones, in appreciation for your exemplary service and dedication from Jazzy Red Talk Show LLC and TV viewers, Mobile, Alabama, presented on September the 28th, 2014. All right. That was great. They're going to uh, take that from you. don't have to be there all the time to do nice things for folks. We're going to send it on in our Reverend Witherspoon. You got to thank him. Yes, yes, yes. I also want to extra thank Reverend Witherspoon for this great, great, great opportunity. Because if it had not been for these two, I would not be here. So I have to say thank you and give God the honor and the glory for putting you guys in my life as well as Miss Jazzy right here. 
because if not, I would not be here. So I truly thank you, Reverend Weatherspoon, for this. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You remember when I, I, I filmed Peggy Scott Adams' birthday party, I told you we interviewed her on the red carpet. See how God has circle on things? I said, this is a young lady here that was running across my camera. And look at it now. <laughs> look at it now. Yeah. Uh, when we come back, we're going to film Lady Ebony off. Uh, we're going to film her pulling off to Bobby Jones. Jazz Red. Tell him God bless. God bless. God bless. Jazz Red Talk Show. And uh, you know, I always do show and tell. I liked it when I was in school. And we're going to whoosh Lady Ebony. She's going to Bobby Jones. That's what I'm talking about. Jazz Red, we love you. I know this face. Tell him your name, Pastor. Pastor Gino Jennings. Yeah, I'll see him. Comcast Channel 6. At what time you come on? I think it's 8 o'clock. Oh, it's 10. It's 10 o'clock. He come on at 10 o'clock every Sunday night. I'm going to want you to tune in to him. I've been watching him. Uh, we're going to have an interview with him because uh, you need to know something about the man ago. I just felt you need to know something. Uh, uh, Pastor Jen, I want to thank you for letting me have this interview. I want you, you know something, I want you to tell me, how you become a pastor? How, did you come up in the church or, or what? I, I did have a church background. My father and mother did raise me up uh, in a church. Uh, they taught some of the things that we teach. But the majority of things that we teach, they did not teach us. Uh, I had a God-fearing father and a God-fearing mother. So that fear of God was instilled in me as a child. So you come up in the church. Exactly. Because you're so strong now. You know you cut people at times. You cut them. You cut them. It isn't me that cut them. It is the book of scriptures that cut them. I heard you preach. I'm sitting here today. And uh, you all are going to, you're going to see some of this because I'm going to put it on. But you to the point, you don't play, you don't sugarcoat nothing. You, I mean, you just, you come on with it. How? It, it, it's necessary now. We're living in a society wherein people go to church. But church. The center of church today is not God. It's just entertainment. It's amusement and money. Money. money pretty much take the place of God in church. And if you look at most of your religious programming of any mega church or even small churches, it's all centered around money, trying to get the people to believe that the Lord will bless you based upon the quantity of money that you're able to give. And some people don't don't have money. One pastor told me, he talked a little bit like you here in Mobile. Um, he said, I read I got a lady that feet is swole. And she has a sheet up to her door. She need a door. So how can I ask her for money? And I said, God, that, that reverend really got a point there, you know. We, we're supposed to be givers, you know. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I mean, Jesus taught us that the poor you have with you always. But the preachers have gotten to a point, it isn't the poor they care about. It is their wallets they care about. How big of a car they can drive. How large of a house they can get. No misunderstand me. If a man work and buy this on his own, fine. But this should not be gotten uh, as a result of the people giving him houses, cars, and buying him all these things. And yet all he's doing is in the pulpit just entertaining them. And that's what these preachers are. They're not preachers. They're entertainers. And, and I know that some of the mega church, they are... Uh Okay, like you come to Mobile, you able to meet people and talk with them, and um, some people out of town told me they've never just shook their hand with their pastor. They they in there watching him. You in the church, but you see him on a TV screen, exactly. and he don't really know you. Well, no, so, no, these fellas, fellas though they uh, they are too important. They feel as though that many of the members in the church are beneath them, uh, so they set themselves up as a so superior in thought and in character until they think it's beneath them to mingle among the people. But uh, I love to mingle among the people. And I see that because, I, look, I worked last night at the shipyard and uh, Miss Betty called and said, Red, you got the interview. It's okay. I said, what? Say, said, yeah. He said, you can come. I said, I'm getting up now. <laughs> I'm getting up now so I can go get him. Um, what? You always... Talk like this, or oh, you? Yes. Oh yes, I believe that one should take a firm stand on the scriptures. If the fear of God is in a man, and the fear of God is correct, okay. then he won't be afraid to stand for what's written. If he don't fear God, and most of them don't, 
He's not going to stand on what the scripture says. That's why you find these men. Turn the television on. Who even talk about God anymore? When I came up, we was taught about God and taught about the fear of going to hell. Hell is not a subject in church. Church is just centered around money, prosperity plan, get all you can can, get rich, get rich quick. And they got you thinking that right here is heaven. This is far from heaven. This is far from heaven, yeah. I, I was astounded to uh, see you touch subjects, uh, women preachers. Yeah. You touched uh, oh. You touched on the women preachers. Uh, Mobile is full of them. You touched on homosexuality. It's full of them. You point some buttons. Yeah. But but everybody was agreeing with you in here. I I seen that everybody uh, agree. They they agree. They well, were these these subjects is is clearly in the scriptures. And you went to the scriptures. Exactly. The preachers won't deal with it because they're afraid of offending their congregation, and they're afraid of losing members. Homosexuality. Anyone with common sense know that God did not make a man for a man or a woman for a woman. He made the woman for the man. But because this has become such a it's a biblical subject. But it has become a political subject. And because it has become a political subject, preachers all across this nation and around the world, and I travel around the world, have become so afraid to preach against homosexuality. It's a hand-off subject. Whether it's Pentecostal, non-denominational, apostolic, Lutheran, Baptist, Catholic, it doesn't matter what the religion may be, homosexuality has become a taboo subject out of fear of being sued or out of fear of losing membership. Have you had anyone that uh, may have been homosexual and listening to you or you preach to them, have they changed, oh, changed yes. their way? Many homosexuals that have come to First Church. Yes, many of them repented of their sins, was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and yes, changed. I've had many write me from so many parts of this country, said that this type of hard preaching changed them. And at the same time, I've had some write me and told me what kept them in this homosexual uh, way of thinking was because the church they was in never preached against it. It accepted. In fact, the churches accepted it. They don't preach against it. They accepted it. You got on the subject of uh, young girls today. Yes. And uh, you really put your foot on it. Uh, sneaking boys in their mother's home. Uh, now that was a subject that was you say you they don't pay no rent you're not paying any rent it's not your home but you're gonna bring someone in uh i really i really like that because my mom we knew better right we knew better exactly not with mom you go but we would maybe go somewhere else <laughs> okay we can go to mama's house okay right. but uh if we tried to sneak we had to go somewhere else the type uh, of respect that is among young people today they will bring girls and boys right in the houses of their parents. It have gotten so bad now until even a lot of the parents are letting their girlfriend, their daughter's boyfriend, and their son's girlfriend spend the night right in the house. So immorality is being demonstrated and taught and promoted even by parents. Disrespectful. Exactly. That is disrespectful. Well, what happened to respect? <laughs> If the fear of God leaves a community, then you have no choice but to expect that community to run wild, barbaric, and uncivilized. If the fear of the Lord leave a household, what's supposed to come of that household but to be uncivil, rebellious, hard head disrespectful the laws of God will be rejected because the fear of God is not there and this is why churches and religion are in the predicament in sin you do know that the children they throw it in your face parents okay uh, they'll do something they'll say well you let me or you you know they're gonna you know they're gonna throw that right back over there to you the parents must lead by example and today the parents many of them are not leaving by, leading by example. Some of them are. Yeah, but they're younger. But many of them are not. But what you have is a situation here in America where babies are raising babies. Okay. Mothers are becoming younger and younger, okay. as young as 10, 11, 12, 13. What do they know about raising a child? And then who stuck to raise the child? 
the grandmother. Many of these young girls having babies and going right back out in the street partying and dancing. And in most cases, these good-for-nothing, low-life bums who got them pregnant is nowhere around to take care of the child. Nowhere around. Nowhere around. Uh, you left. You left with some baggage. And the statistics is getting growing, getting larger and larger and larger. And don't misunderstand me. A lot of this is church. We ain't talking about just people in the street. We talking about church. And the preachers don't say nothing. And the reason why a lot of the preachers don't say nothing because some of those babies that's coming in the church are theirs. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Many of these babies that's popping up in the church belong to the preacher. And the preacher, he would pay the young lady or young ladies an X amount of dollars to keep them quiet. And, and, and it's sad that they have gotten that low. It's bad. Um, I've I seen you say, if someone in your church touched his stepchild or touched someone, you would... You would, you know, he had to go to jail. Oh, yes. I mean, if any man going to abuse a child, he has to go to jail. It doesn't matter who it is. If it's a preacher, if it's a deacon, if it's a brother, I don't care who he is. If he going to physically abuse a child, imagine a lot of these preachers are having sex with five and six and seven year old kids. And they're just being, to keep from being arrested certain areas of the Catholic diocese have moved the priests from one parish to another parish to avoid prison. No. If the priest is a pedophile, if the so-called apostle is a pedophile, if the Democrat or the Republican is a pedophile, if the pastor or the bishop or the so-called reverend is a pedophile, then lock his tail up in prison. Let him read his Bible in prison. He can read it in prison. He can read it in prison. <laughs> yeah. And then he can go from jail to hell. Okay. You, you've, uh, you're you married. Yes, I am. How long? Been married since we was 26. We have uh, been married for 24 years. How many kids? Seven kids. Four boys and three girls. All home kids. All home kids. By one way. By, I wouldn't have it no other way. What, what advice would you give to a young man that's in the church? The advice that, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what advice would you give to a young man if he thought that he could uh, marry and divorce, marry and divorce? And I've done it. I've been divorced twice. I mean, and we know that's wrong. But, uh, well, I, I, I respect your honesty. Yeah. I respect your honesty. At, at least you admit it's wrong. These men who are preachers that promote divorce are a contributing factor to the destruction of the homes in Mobile or in any other part of America that condones divorce. Any preacher on television or radio that says it's all right to divorce and then going to try to bring the Bible and twist it all up to give you leverage to have other wives and other husbands, them preachers are not for your salvation at all. I am very strict on young men because society has been designed to make it complicated for the young man in America, especially for the young black man in America. So we encourage our young brothers, get an education, get the highest degree you can get. Don't go around making a bunch of babies that you can't afford. Why should I try, why would a young man go get one, try to get three and four and five girls pregnant, and yet he can't even take care of himself? If you can't take care of self, you certainly is incompetent to take care of others that come about as a result of yourself. So we encourage brothers, don't get no sister pregnant. You not married. It's just old-fashioned teaching. We encourage the sisters, don't allow yourself to get pregnant and you not married. Get in school, get the highest degree you can get in a profession that you want to major in. But first and foremost, Have God first in your life. Learn the way of holiness. Live a disciplined life and love yourself. See, a lot of our young women run around getting pregnant because they don't love themselves. They're so easy to love someone else and looking for that other individual to love them. No, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. So I can't love my neighbor as myself if I don't love myself. I've got a a work buddy we call Eggman. He said, uh, he told me years ago. He said, well, I can't get married now, Red. I said, why? He said, I ain't got no place to put her. So I met him years later. I said, hey, Eric, how you doing? He said, I'm married, Red. He said, I got somewhere to put her now, so I'm married. And 
and I, I like what you what you preach. I really do, because I mean, you the, uh, you had a, a, a okay, ladies and gentlemen. I was here. These were some young men. It was just full up with these young men in the front of the church, and they were right. I mean, they were right there at that level. I don't know if you've been teaching them or. Oh yeah. Okay, oh, they yeah. were they were right there. Uh, a lot of people find it amazing that so many young men is even in church. A lot of people who watch our telecast. They are shocked at the amount of the hundreds of young men that is in church. Young men don't be in church today. They be in the street. Most time you find young men in Islam. But you have, we have hundreds of young men of so many ethnic groups following the holy teaching that Jesus gave his apostles. And uh, it is our objective to develop them into real sincere, God-fearing men so when women do want to get married, there's something worthwhile. They're ready. They're exactly. Ready. Yeah, they're, there's you're something preparing worthwhile. Them. The, you're preparing them. I mean, they were sitting there like, say that, tell it real. <laughs> and I said, God, they are grin and they they were looking. I came in your church and I went to looking around before you came. Mm -hmm. I seen that they, they get on their knee and they pray. Yes. And I seen a man had a cast on his leg. Mm -hmm. He still got down on that good knee. And he he was praying and uh by me coming up catholic i didn't know you know mm -hmm. i ventured out and i joined another church i'm not catholic now but uh they pray they pray before they what was that about you? well first and foremost we, we encourage the people to, to create a prayerful atmosphere okay even the scriptures teach that man should always pray and not to faint prayer is something that ha is practically obsolete in church now you know you have a lot of hooping and hollering and jumping in there all over the place but prayer it don't hardly take place in church. So we try to encourage the people before any song and all that starts. When you come into the house of God, even if you come early, hit your knees. They did. And be in prayer. A good season prayer. And I encourage all churches to create a prayerful atmosphere. These young people need to be praying more than singing and jumping. They need to be praying. Yeah, I... I, when I seen them, uh, I was looking like, oh, this is something different here. These, yeah. uh, they were speaking in tongues. Yes. Uh, so before you even showed up, I mean, the presence of the Lord was here. Like they said, the presence of the Lord was here. It, it was here. It was here. Yeah, um, if you have a church and the presence of the Lord is not there until the preacher appeared, that's not church. Okay. I seen that the ladies would wear something on their head. And I, I think I heard you say something about wear something on your head. And I had a little sequin of tam. I forgot it. And I said, well, I'm violating because I ain't got nothing on my head. Um, what, tell, tell my viewers why you say. The, book uh, the scriptures teaches in 11 chapter 1 Corinthians that if a woman pray or prophesy having her head uncovered, she dishonor her head. And the scripture says the head of every woman is the man. So when a woman have her head covered, it shows respect to man on earth. And it also shows respect and reverence to man in heaven. For the scripture says, for this cause ought the woman have power upon her head because of the angels. So when she cover her head. It shows reverence to the angels and shows reverence or honor and respect to the man. These people, you got some true followers, but you know, I, uh, Miss Betty, I didn't know what she looked like until today. Yeah. She just would call me and tell me, I love your show. You know, you help folks and, and I like your show. And I said, well, I, I, she told me what church she was in. I said, well, I'd like to have an interview with him. So we I've been wanting this interview for about two years. Wow. Yeah, about two wow. years. And she It's a blessing to have you here. Yeah, she got it. She got it. And and I see we got uh security. You you just don't see, but we got some young men that's uh blocking they like security here and uh like your superstar man and I know it's all about God, but I'm so, saying they're very respectful. You you've got these young men and they respectful. Well, how did you how you get them where they just I'll help you with anything, a Reg. Person, a person first have to respect God. If you respect God and get the knowledge of God, that knowledge will bring you to the knowledge of yourself. A person who don't respect themselves is only because they don't respect God. A person who don't respect God is because they don't respect themselves. So you first have to get a person to respect God. And that only can happen if you teach them the ways of God and the uh, knowledge of God, which will bring them to the knowledge of themselves. And when that happens, one would respect themselves and respect others. And we always encourage all brothers and sisters to be respectful, not only to each other, but to anyone out there in the street. You do a lot of travel. Extremely. Africa, Europe, uh, the Caribbean. Uh, Mobile, Alabama is small. Exactly. How you, 
you got a church here in Mobile, Alabama. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter how small a place may be. Okay. If I it's know. if it's one soul, that one soul to me is just as valuable as one thousand. When I first started out, I only had about twelve to fifteen followers. But now we have hundreds and in some places thousands. And today I still will go inside of a house and preach to people in a home. In a home. It doesn't, of it doesn't matter how large I will, the churches are, how big the telecast is. I don't believe in getting too big to do what the Bible say do. And I see that. I see that because you're sitting here. I mean, I don't, th- I don't, I don't think some of them would give me no interview like that. You know, uh, I, I just appreciate you. I'm, you know, is it anything that you want to say? Because his name is running across the screen with his one eight 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 number. We're gonna put that on the screen where they can call. Um, if people are sitting, if someone is sitting there and they say, "Well, okay, I want to, I want to check his church out," uh, what would you tell them? I will tell them, first and foremost, the scriptures itself governs church. That don't mean people in the church live by everything that the scripture says, because everyone don't. Because this one struggle with that, that one struggle with that. But yet, church is where the word of God should always be taught. So struggles and the need that I have to go through my struggle is always constantly taught. I would encourage people not just to go to church because it's Sunday, but the purpose of going to church is to get right with God. And if you go to church for any other reason other than to get right with God, it is a waste of time to go. And today, church is just not church. It's entertainment. It's amusement. The fear of God is not there. And the word of God in most places is not preached. You know, they get the quartet group singing, drunken and smoking, and they just have a ball. But church is not like it was years ago. Years ago, over half of the things that go on in church wasn't even allowed. But today, you got praise dancers up on a stage, up on a pulpit. You got women up in the pulpit preaching. You got half-naked women. You got homosexuals all on the choir. You got homosexual pastors. Even right here in Mobile. Everything that the Bible speaks against, not only does it exist in Mobile, but it's around the world. So even people who watch the telecast who may feel as though I'm too harsh or too strict or too outspoken, yet they respect it. And the reason why they respect the telecast is because they know that what we're teaching, even though it may sound harsh and brutal, they know it need to be said. Someone have to say it. And in this case, God have moved on me to say everything that needs to be said. Yeah, it does. And, and when you would preach, you say, read. I mean, or this, or this brother, they would come in with the scripture. Oh, yes, so, brother, William, you, you got to have scripture for all your teaching. Okay. We have nothing written out. There's no pre-planned sermon. I've never been to Bible school. We don't sit up and study the night before and then choose a text. No. We all everything that we need to know is already written in already. the scriptures. You 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 go to preaching, you don't have nothing in front of you, and and that man with that Bible, he know that Bible. I mean, he just while you talking, he he getting it. He's right. he's he's filming over to it, and he call it out. Uh, yes, it's 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 a divine ability that the Lord have blessed him with, and I and I certainly thank God for it. Okay. Uh, on our uh, last little note, because they got a full coast meal for the rib here. He got to eat before he come back out. Uh, I want to thank you for interviewing. But uh, on this last little note, I, I appreciate this interview to the fullest. I really I, do. I appreciate you being here. I, I appreciate the interview. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell your wife. Thank you for letting us I borrow will. you a little bit. I most know? certainly will. I, I, I thank God for my wife. She's a wonderful lady. We met when we was 14. We got married when we was 26, and there will not be no divorce in our relationship. And that is a great thing. I, 
That is a great thing. God, uh, I'm going to send one. I've got a book published. I'm going to send it with your wife. We're going to say the first chapter, kind of watch that, okay? Uh, a few cuss words in there. Jazz used to have a bad mouth back in the days. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I, I felt what you were saying about don't cuss. Women be respectful. Uh, watch your mouth. Right. Uh, I felt that because I, I used to cuss bad like a sailor and working in the shipyard. They, they mm-hmm. taught me well. My mom was a cusser. So I come up with it and I seen it's disrespectful. No man wants. No so man won't marry you with that. that. You uh, heard this morning, you can identify. With oh, it every it, bit of it, it causes you to reflect back at the past and see what improvements that you're able to make in the present. Oh yes, oh yes, I've changed a lot. I, I don't, I don't, I, I cuss so much. I don't want to cuss anymore. I, I don't want to cuss anymore. You made yourself tired. I, I, yeah, yeah. It was just, it was vain. It was meaningless. Right. And 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 no man want no woman that got a bad mouth like right, that. Exactly. And you, you were right. You were right. When you were saying, I was saying, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Thank you again. Thank you, uh, Pastor Gino Jennings. I ain't going to never forget your name now. Gino Jennings. Thank you, sir. We've just had our interview. I hope you've enjoyed it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to put on a little his preaching with the end of this show. Thank you. God bless you. Jazz and Red, we love you. Peace out. So this universal rebellion from politics to religion. What makes one rebel? Hatred. That's right. For the Lord said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yes, his commandments is not grievous. It may hurt the flesh, but if I love him, I will strive to live by the commandments he laid. They may be tough, they may be hard, but I'm going to make an attempt. Why? I want to stay on the good side of God. Let us look at ourselves and no one else by what is written here. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. Follow me. We want to just trail this through the Bible. Now there's consequences for hard hit. Oh yeah. Old folk used to use this term. Hard head make a soft behind. That's right. <laughs> What was they telling you? You keep being hard headed. You keep not listening. You keep not doing what you're told to do. You're going to get a beating as a result of it. That's right. Now let us look at ourselves, brothers and sisters. Can we not admit? You know the word of God say you reap what you sow. Some of the things that we are reaping now is a result of hard head we sow. Yeah. Years ago, yeah. there are certain experiences yeah. that are in our life that we can't, can't even get rid of because you was hard headed five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, forty, and even fifty years ago. Somebody who knew what they was talking about yeah. tried to get through to us, but we were so rebellious, stubborn, ignorant, foolish, wild, immature. And then after our hard headness took place, and as a result of such, now we begin to grow older and we get to ourselves and say sometimes, hey, oh, I wish I would have listened. Hey, I wish I never met him. And I wish I never stopped to talk to her. And I hate I ever drunk that. Oh, I would never smoke that again. <laughs> and, and not going there no more. Yes, yes. Are you listening? Hard headness is demonstrated because one is blind, self willed, self centered, and refuse to submit to authority. And because they are weak-minded, it is more easier for them to cater to others that think like they think. (laughs) Old people say this, misery loves company. So you find young people, like some of the young boys, look, 
some people say, well, the reason why the prison system is full is because there ain't none of those men had uh, any good parenting. No, that ain't true all the time. <laughs> There's some of these mothers and fathers that uh, told them sons and daughters what to do, raised them right, taught them right, but then when those children became adults, yeah. uh -huh. and then wanted to lead to their own understanding and no longer want to follow order. So now, by their own understanding that they thought they had, they end up in jail, shot, stabbed, molested, raped, on drugs, alcohol, pregnant, too young. Are you listening? Amen. You see, my sisters and brothers, Especially my young sisters. You single sisters. No man who do not respect your parents Amen. Go ahead, man. should have a greater influence over you than your parents. Right. Right. The morals and the ethnic, the ethic, the ethics and the do goodness. Yeah. that been instilled in you by parents, no young boy should be so influential that he can bring you down to his doll-like level. Preach right. Go ahead, preach right. And tell your mother and father, say, no company, I'm not here. Stay right. Done. So your respect for God, for parents, and for self should make you uphold that law every day. Right. Right. But when you find this trifling two-legged neighborhood bum, who you are so fascinated with, can con you, manipulate you, throw you a couple of dollars like you throw bones to dogs. And come in a house that's not yours. Not yours. Preach. You pay no bills. No bills. No bills. Just stay in it. You just stay in it. <laughs> yes, sir. You just, you know, attend it. <laughs> yes, sir. You will sneak some trifling boy yeah. or a trifling grown man who's old enough to be your father. And the roof of your parents. How did you get so weak? How did you get so inconcerned about yourself? Yeah. You see, if you love yourself, love yourself. And this is where so many of our young people have made a mess. You're so busy looking for love for someone else until you forgot to love yourself. Yeah. Love yourself first. Don't sit back waiting for some man to say, I love you, and you fall out. No. That's a sales pitch. And some of you young sisters are so green, you're greener than a green banana. Mm -hmm. You have what I call internet intellect. You get your education off internet. You get your education off television. And you have no street smart. You don't know a rap when you see it. So you feel, you feel important. You 18, he's 27 or 30. And you're like, oh, I can't believe you said you love me. You're, there's a saying in the street. Talk about young girls. You're young and dumb and full, and I won't finish the rest of it. <laughs> but you fellas from the hood know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Now, if any of you find this offensive, that's your business. I can't help if you ain't got a preacher that's intelligent enough to teach you. Amen. But here in the truth of God, we teach everything. Amen. And I mean everything. So, you are impressed. You're 18, 19, he's 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So, Give you a few hundred dollars. Oh my God. Nobody ever done this to me before. 
Buy you some clothes. Oh, oh. Pocketbooks, name, brand. Damn. Shoes. Uh -huh. Take you off to dinner. And then you say, well, Pastor James, he didn't ask me for sex. Yet. <laughs> See, you naive. The objective of gifts in the Bible talk about the type of man they give gifts. The objective of giving the gifts is to make you so joyful, so happy, until he's pushing your mind to think that, oh my God, I've got to do something for him because he don't ask for nothing. I am listening. You see, we don't just preach Jesus. We want to teach you what's in the street and how the street functions. In the book of Ecclesiastes, follow me, follow me, follow me. And the book of Ecclesiasticus, or the book is also called the book of Sarah. Not Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiasticus. Listen good. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, and then verse 16. We're going to go to school this morning. Ecclesiasticus 12, 16 says, An enemy seeketh sweetly. A enemy. No, no. Speak sweetly. With his lips. With his lips. His lips, but in his heart, but in his heart, he imagined how to he throw thee. imagined how to throw thee into a pit. Into a pit. He no, will no. weep with his eyes. He will weep with his eyes. But if he find opportunity, if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. Cheryl, you young sister. This old goat. <laughs> buy you things. May even buy you a car. He got your mind so twisted until you won't even listen at your own mother and father when they try to get through to you. That's right. So as a result of this thing, which is nothing but a predator. Amen. Now you are hard head in a way that you never was. Back talk your mother. Why? Because you in love with Solomon. And Solomon is saying you ain't got to listen to your mom. You ain't got to listen to your daddy, baby. Everything you need, I got it right here. If they throw you out, don't worry about it. Hey, this place is yours just like it's mine. In fact, everything is mine and yours. Oh, right. yeah, I got you. Really, so? <laughs> <laughs> you too young, dumb, and naive to realize you're nothing but a toy. That's right. A young, dumb toy. Amen. In fact, you're one of the toys in his toy chest. That's right. Just got tired of playing with some of the toys and he wanted some new breed. That's right. Right now. Listen. Now in the book of Proverbs. Listen. Proverbs chapter 17 and that verse 23. Listen. A wicked man. Uh oh. Give chapter and verse again. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 23. A wicked man. Take it a gift. Take a gift. Out of the bosom. Out of the bosom. To pervert the ways of judgment. Now, you've been taught good judgment, respect your body. You see, we teach old school preaching. In other words, no sex until you're married. I didn't say use protection. No sex. No condom. No nothing inserted in you. Nothing. Nothing. Until you're married. That's right. Teach that book. That's right. Teach that book. Abstain. Preach. 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 Wanna know why you young girls can't keep your panties on and you young boys can't keep your drawers on? Because you're like loose animals. 
A woman should have enough discipline that she don't have about 30 or 40 boy numbers in her phone and tell them all the same perverted conversation. Amen. A young man should have enough discipline and self-respect that you're not sleeping around like a street dog Amen. that piss on your neighborhood fire hydrant. How do you expect for men in the street to respect you, young girl? Look at you. Go ask Megan. Where your breasts begin, it seems. Yeah. You got tattoos right over where your backside begins. Amen. You don't mind dressing with a skirt this big and a blouse that big. Yeah. You don't mind your body parts hanging out. Almost every commercial that comes on television is advertising something by using a half-naked woman. That's right, that's right. Because the media knows sex sells. That's right. So if you ain't for sale, stop dressing like a hoe. I do an ankle chain and Jesus got it got. Why do you need your toenails and fingernails painted? That's right. Why do you need so much artificial hair? Don't you love the way God made you? Amen. Why do you want to look like Lady Gaga? Some strange thing. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you want to look like Jennifer Lopez or Beyonce? Why do you want to look like celebrity hoes? That's right. Why do you want to look like the Kodashian? No, it's the Kardashians. No, it's the Kodashian. Think of it. How these celebrities just pass around to each other with no shame. I mean, they sitting with a ball, but they just knocked up their wife. That's right. Hey man, did she do this to you? No, she did what? I gotta ask about that, dog. I gotta ask about that. <laughs> and we asked. <laughs> yeah, I did that. You want me to do you? Yeah. It ain't no shame no more no. in society. No. So the more nugget you are, the more respect you get. As you think. When you're covered, people say you're in a cult. That's how crazy folks are. There's this woman journalist on the internet who hate my guts. She wrote an article up on me. She said, I'm the second most dangerous man, not in America, in the world. She said, I'm the second most dangerous man in the world that she advised nobody to listen to. And she took excerpts of a message when we was teaching on modesty, how a woman should be covered. She put that excerpt and asked for comments. I'm pretty sure she's probably disappointed because most of the comments she got was in my favor. <laughs> that was one. One elderly white sister that commented and said, why you got a problem with what he's saying? This man is teaching modesty. We should look a certain way. Say what you want about most of the women. They're respected. That's right. That's How right. do you expect to be respected, young girl, when you so quick to get your body tattooed? Yeah. Not painted. Listen, that skin ain't gonna stay smooth all the time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Time, time, your body gonna shift. Time is gonna shift. Something's gonna go here and there. And something's gonna go there. <laughs> Same <laughs> thing with you, brother. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have become hypnotized by the media. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Women shaking their behind all out in the street <laughs> and they're ready to cry rape. That's right. They want to twerk 
they backside to get attention of the hand-shaking contest where some of you sick mothers allow your daughters to participate. Little daughters, not 10 years old, shake their behinds to get a prize. And you sick mothers, don't see nothing wrong with it? Talk to me. Then the moment someone mount up on your door and rob her of her virginity as a result of her twerking. Now you ready to cry, cry. That's right. Why are you listening to what I'm telling you? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, and that's verse 23. But as a wicked woman, oh, glory to God, a wicked woman is given as a portion. Is given as a portion to a wicked man. Ooh. You young naive girl, you argue with your mother. You argue. The guy is no good, but you're looking at the gifts that he bought you. Presents and gifts. Uh oh. Do you see all the Bible? Do you see all the Bible? Amen. Listen. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter twenty, verse twenty-nine. What is it? Presents and gifts. Presents. And get blind the eyes of the one. As a result of your new coat, your new shoes, your new Gucci bag, your new hat, now you got a bank account. What does it do? Blind the eyes. Now you can't see nothing that your parents are telling you. Now you're coming in late. Breaking the laws of curfew. Yes, sir. They tell you, look, you go out, let's be in by 9 o'clock, no later than 9.30. But your sugar daddy sugar. is telling you, look, you ain't got to pay your parents no mind. In fact, you can spend the night here if you want. So now she's struggling when there shouldn't be a struggle. Because you should love your mother and father more than you love some parent. Amen. That's right. Are you listening? I right. So why is she so close connected to this old goat? Because he may can do things for her that the parents cannot get afford. Right.
wish I had a witness. Oh, I thank the Lord, yeah, yeah. Cause it could have been me. Every time I go down on my knees, I have to say thank you. Cause it could have been me. I got one more verse, now listen. When the doctor shook his head, can I get me a witness? It could have been me sleeping in my grave, but Jesus stepped right in, y'all, and he made old death behave. And I come to let you know, cause it could have been me. Saving me, he didn't have to do it, but I'm glad about it. Oh, I thank the Lord, yeah, yeah. Cause it could have been me. Every time I go down on my knees, I have to tell somebody, it could have been me. Sometime I go in the room and fold my arm, here's what I say. To say, Lord, I thank you, cause you've been good to me. Lord, you've been so good to me. When I don't have no money in my pocket, I don't let it bother me because the Lord said He'll work it out for me. I knew He will. Have anybody been? 